Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim, a Canadian girl, and today we are going to have a look at phosphates, where they come from, what they are, and how to get rid of them. So please stay tuned. This is my 20 gallon grow out, which is home to my Super Red Empress juveniles. In here, there are four Super Red Empress Dolphin Cross juveniles as well. Now, I have not been able to pick them out yet, but see if you can spot them. So what exactly are phosphates? Phosphates are something that are in every aquarium. Many of us aren't even aware they are there. Phosphates themselves are not harmful to our fish, but raised levels can produce situations that can become harmful. This is one of the reasons we diligently do weekly water changes, keeping the phosphates at a non-problematic level. Without doing proper water changes, the phosphate levels will rise. As I said, they do not directly harm your fish. High levels of phosphates will encourage algae growth and can result in an algae bloom. Once your water has turned a lovely shade of green, then you may have some problems. Though green water containing microscopic algae is very hungry for oxygen and will deplete the oxygen levels within your water column that the fish need to survive, eventually causing them harm. It's important to learn as much as we can about the elements that come together in providing a safe and healthy environment for our fish. Learning about phosphates and testing your water will equip you with knowledge so you are able to decelerate their effects. So where do phosphates come from? Phosphates are a natural product produced by the breaking down of waste in your aquarium. Not only fish waste or leftover foods, but everything from chemical buffers to the water itself can contain significant levels of phosphates. Phosphate sources include leftover food, plant decay, fish waste, dead fish, pH buffers, KH buffers, aquarium salts, dying algae, and even the water itself. Some carbon filters contain phosphates. Check that the carbon you use is phosphate free. It's believed that once a carbon filter has absorbed its capacity, it can leach what it has been already absorbed back into your aquarium. Therefore, it's very important that if you do use carbon, it's changed regularly. Using carbon is also a personal preference. I personally feel carbon has its uses, but I don't feel it's something that needs to be part of your regular maintenance routine. Phosphates come in two forms, organic and inorganic. The API phosphate test kits are very helpful, but they are only able to test the inorganic phosphate levels. So in truth, you are not getting a complete reading as only part of the phosphates are being examined. You want your phosphate levels to be ideally 0.05 ppms or parts per million. Once levels reach 1 ppm, the conditions are beneficial for algae growth. At 2 to 3 ppms, algae will overgrow and you may have a bloom on your hands. So how do we reduce phosphates? The best way to prevent phosphate elevation is to watch the levels and nip them in the bud before they become problematic. However, there are ways to reduce your phosphates using the following steps. A large water change is always your best bet. Although this is just a temporary fix until you find the underlying cause. Until you do, you must do frequent water changes to keep the phosphates in check. Remove everything from your aquarium, the rocks and decorations, so you can give them a good scrub. Allow things to settle and then vacuum the substrate. 
After a couple water changes, you can change your filter media using a phosphate absorber is very effective. You can use it in virtually any type of filter. Now, I avoid chemical removers and consider them my very last resort. How do we keep our phosphates low? Once you have your phosphates where you want them, you want to make sure to keep them there. Simple tips include feed sparingly. Uneaten flaked food is the number one source of phosphates in your water. Just a pinch of food is all they need. Allow them time to eat anything that makes it to the substrate and remove any bits that are left over. Consider changing your food. Not all foods are created equal. Phosphates are used as a preservative in flaked foods. Make sure and read your labels. Choose the ones lowest in phosphates. Also, test your tap water for phosphates. Tap water can contain up to 1 ppm of phosphates. If the level is higher than that, you should seek an alternate water source. Regular maintenance is crucial. Weekly water changes are a must. 50% or more, I personally recommend. Vacuum regularly, even if you only vacuum the visually dirty areas collecting any waste particles or debris that you can see. This will help avoid phosphates building up. Having a schedule in place for cleaning your filters will also help control excessive phosphates. Choosing a phosphate absorber to add to your filtration system, I would recommend. Be careful in choosing carbon as some will leach phosphates. Carbon media specifically made for saltwater tanks will not leach. It may be your best bet. Water treatments, such as buffers that stabilize pH levels or change the hardness, often contain phosphates. They are not recommended unless absolutely necessary. If you feel you must have them, then do a little research and choose the one that has the least amount of phosphates. Don't you just love this hobby? We just keep learning and learning. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I wish you a wonderful day tomorrow and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.